Now, um, you know, today we start. Today, you know, we found out the news about Captain Lou Albano. Did did you ever meet him in your travel? Actually, no. I never got the opportunity. I never got the opportunity to meet Captain Lou Albano. You know, um, you know, it's a shame that you know, you know. Now, update me. He's he's just really ill, right? He's, he's that's that's what that is right now, right? He he actually passed today. Oh, okay. Then that's news to me. The <laughs> last I heard was he's he's just very ill, you know. But I mean, he has to tell a guy rest his soul, you know. But no, I um never got the opportunity to meet him. But uh, I heard a lot of stories about him, you know, from Seeker and stuff, you know. But um, wow, I didn't, you know, that's I didn't know that. So, a guy rest his soul. Definitely. Uh, any 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 humorous stories that you can remember from Sika about Captain? Oh or? man! Well, I don't know if I can tell those. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if I can tell. I, I mean, on Sika alone, I could probably write a book on 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 the things with him. Because when I was down there with Sika, I lived I lived with Sika for a while, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, because at the time when I moved to Florida. Um, it was, I don't know if you ever heard of, have you ever heard of a wrestling by the name of Adrian Street? I he's out of Adrian been, Street. Uh, well, he, he was a uh, big deal back in, uh, uh the Continental, uh, territory, uh, back in like the 70s and late 70s, 80s and stuff like that. But anyways, he had a school down in Florida and he had apartments, you know, he only charged 10 bucks a night. So I stayed at the apartment. But, I mean, I, I had so many problems there and stuff like that. And at the time, I was working for Sika by then, and, you know, and I was telling him, you know, we just, you know, talking. And he's like, well, yeah, kid, you know, I got an uh, extra room there at my place there. Fella, you can, you know, come by my place and stay there if you need to. So, okay, thank you. So, but, man, I mean, when when people ask me what I was trained by, I credit Sika because I learned so much from him, psychology-wise. And, I mean, and... I mean, it, it, when, when it's kind of like when you know, you know, when you're learning something and, you know, you're taught it one way and then you understand it, you know, but then you, you, you learn the same thing or, or more from somebody else and they explain it to you in a way that opens your eyes like, wow, I never thought of it that way, you know. Uh, Sig was like that, you know, and, I mean, he took me under his wing and everything like that and, I mean, it was a great time. Every time I think of him, I start laughing because I got so many crazy stories. But I'll tell you this one. This is the this is probably the the, the most uh, I don't know the, the least amount of cussing. I'm not going to cuss, but the least amount of cussing <laughs> that happened on one of my adventures with Sika. We was coming back from the show, right? And this is where I was living with him, and I and I, I was driving around too, you know, to the doctor's appointments and to the show and just running and stuff. And he's, you know, we're driving. Like, yeah, kid, yeah, stop at the store there, fella. And I go buy me a beer. I'm only 19 at the time. Uh, I say, um, oh, okay. Uh, that's all I say is okay because I'm not going to lie to you. When I first met Seeker, you know, and was staying there, he scared the crap out of me. The, the, the way he looked. I mean, seriously, he, he scared me, you know. And so I said, okay. And so I went, you know into this, the gas station to get the beer, you know, and depending on some areas, most people, they won't even check your ID or whatever. So I go get the beer, put it on the counter. The first thing guy says, oh, I need your ID. I said, oh, well, you know, it's not for me. It's for, you know, the guy I'm with in the car right there. And even, you know, the car was parked right next to um, where you could walk in, you know. So he saw a seeker, you know. And so, he said, well, I'm not selling it to you. You're not old enough. I'm like, oh, okay. So I go to seeker. I explain to him. Um, what happened, and uh, when he wants something done, he wants it right then and there. He don't want to hear no excuses. He wants it then and there. So I'm trying my best to explain this without him getting all mad and crazy. So he was like, oh, get out, get out the way. I'm going to go handle it. So now I go back in the store. I'm in the, I'm across from the clerk. Seeker's in the door, and the way it looked was kind of like I'm trying to use this, this, this um, old guy to, to buy myself a, 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 a minor some liquor, you know. So that's the way I could, he pictured it, right? So, and Sick was like, yeah, yeah, this beer's for me. The kid trying to get the beer for me. What are you doing? I, you know, I want the beer. 
And at this point, the guy's like, you know what, I'm not selling it to nobody. Oh, you know what, you know, F it then. I don't need this. And so he, he can grabs the beer. Doesn't even look where he throws it. Bro, this is a glass bottle. This is a 40-ounce glass bottle of beer. Just, just throws it. You know, and it goes flying past me. And I'm thinking in my head, oh, man, this guy's about to call the cops right now. And luckily, it lands in a, in a, in a, a pile of potato chips and stuff. So I just said, let's go. You know, so Seeker jumped in the car. And, and I'm on my way out, and the secret, you know, he's got his middle finger up, you know, in the car to the clerk. That you know, crazy, you know, just going all nuts and stuff. But, um, man, I mean, it, it was crazy. I mean, it, my whole time with Seeker, was, I had a ball, you know. You know, I had, I had a ball. That was one of the greatest times in my career, man, my time down in Florida with him, you know. It sounds like fun. Maybe a little too yeah, much fun. Yeah. I need to I need to call him. I haven't talked to him in a long while. You know, he's, you know, he, I mean, he, he took care of me. He's like a second dad to me. You know, I need to give him a call and see what's up. <laughs> All right, most definitely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, you know, you know, before we get you out of here, exactly what are you doing now? Are you just are you still hitting the NBC scene, or are you doing something else? Oh, of course, I'm wrestling all the time. Like this weekend. I'm going to be in uh, um, Fishersville, Virginia, and I'm going to be wrestling for the uh, Expo Land Wrestling. Yeah, in Fishersville, Virginia, it's going to be a big show. So anybody that's listening to this that's in uh, um, Virginia, close by Fishersville, definitely check me out there this Saturday at 6 o'clock. You know, and other than that, you know, um, for all the updates and everything, pictures as far as uh, – um, shows and stuff, anybody out there that's listening to this, they can check me out at myspace.com uh, slash D-R-A-Y 3000, you know, for all the latest info on D-Ray 3000 and all the, um, everything about it. All right, for awesome. sure. All right, man, yeah. thanks, for, thanks for coming on, D-Ray. Uh, we'll, once we'll put the website, the MySpace website out on the chat room again. And, you know, okay. thanks for coming on. Well, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. Give me time, you know. All right. Well, we look to have you back on in the future, and uh, hopefully by that time you'll be uh, shining in TNA or WWE or Japan, wherever. Hopefully. That will. And, and tell, tell Big Boy I said what's up, Andre, all right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> well, you guys take it easy. All right, All right man. man.